With three games left to go in the 2023 season, the San Francisco Giants have made the decision to fire manager Gabe Kapler. Welcome into another edition of the Kerry Crowley Show, first emergency podcast edition since we've got this going. I apologize for the audio issues, the video issues that you might encounter on this one. I'm on vacation, but felt it was important to come on here and talk about the big news that will impact the immediate and long-term future of the San Francisco Giants organization. Just two years after Gabe Kapler was honored with the 2021 National League Manager of the Year Award, he is out in San Francisco. Credit to Susan Slusser of the San Francisco Chronicle for breaking the news. The Giants announced it almost immediately after that. And this is really an interesting decision because there's so many different factors at play here when you judge the current state of the San Francisco Giants and where the organization wants to go. And if you've listened to the Kerry Crowley show in the past, I've talked about kind of the hierarchy of power that the Giants have set up with Chairman Greg Johnson, who's the leadership face or face of the leadership group, face of the ownership group right now, Farhan Zaidi, the president of baseball operations, who's responsible for assembling the Giants roster and making the big picture organizational decisions. And ultimately it was Farhan who made the call to fire Kapler, his hand-picked manager, who he decided to replace Bruce Bochy with after Bochy decided to retire back in 2019. Of course, we know that Bochy is out of retirement, but ultimately when the Giants made the decision back in November of 2018 to go with Farhan Zaidi as their replacement for Bobby Evans, as their new president of baseball operations, the next gen president of baseball operations as Larry Bear termed it at the time, we knew that Bruce Bochy was not long for San Francisco. Farhan was going to have the opportunity to pick his own manager. He went out and at the time made the incredibly unpopular decision to hire Gabe Kapler as his manager after Kapler was fired in Philadelphia after kind of failing with the Philadelphia Phillies. And so we've seen how that organization has regrouped since then, and we will now see how the San Francisco Giants regroup, because I think this is a decision that many of us, myself included, did not necessarily expect to come just weeks ago. And Greg Johnson ultimately told Susan Slusser that he anticipated Farhan Zaidi and Gabe Kapler would be back in 2024. And we now know that Greg Johnson spoke too soon. It was silly of him to make the proclamation at the time with the Giants still in the playoff race, with this team still having the opportunity to accomplish its internal goal of making the postseason, to say that both the president of baseball operations and the manager would be back in San Francisco. Because we all knew that looking at the Giants' daunting schedule ahead and knowing how the team had basically performed since the start of J July at the plate and since the start of August in all facets of the game, that a collapse was entirely possible. A collapse is what we had witnessed since the beginning of August, and a collapse is ultimately what led to the firing of Gabe Kapler. But it's interesting because Greg Johnson makes this proclamation a few weeks ago and now goes back on his word, and he ultimately looks silly making this decision. He looks like he does not have a firm grip on what's going on, and I think that that should be most concerning for Giants fans right now, most concerning moving forward, is that the main face of the ownership group came out and said two weeks ago that all was fine, that the leadership would be back, even though he knew at the time that, that was an incredibly unpopular thing to say, even though he knew at the time that many Giants fans had lost their connection with the franchise, did not identify with the way that the Giants were playing baseball, with all the platooning, with all the bullpenning, that ultimately comes from the leadership group. That comes from ownership. It comes from the president of baseball operations in Farhan Zaidi. It comes from the front office. Gabe Kapler, as I've discussed many times on the Kerry Crowley show in the past, was basically kind of the person to dictate what front office and ownership wanted to the players on a daily basis. And I think that if you were among the people like myself that thought the Giants should win between 84 and 87 games, should be contending for a wild card spot at the end of this season, this decision makes sense. But when you see this roster on the field, when you know that the free agent acquisitions that the Giants pursued last offseason, Mitch Hanniger and Mike Conforto and Ross Stripling, the guys who didn't take this team, this 2023 roster, to the next level as the Giants anticipated they would do after a very disappointing 81 and 81 season back in 2022, it leads to a lot bigger picture questions than just who the manager of the roster is, who's leading this team in the dugout next season. It calls into question front office philosophies. It calls into question how much of a grip the ownership group really has, how in touch it is with the Giants fan base, and really where this team is headed moving forward. Because we know that Farhan Zaidi seems to still be the guy in charge in San Francisco. The statement that was issued by the Giants by Zaidi, he was the one who recommended this decision to the ownership group. And you would have thought that, okay, Kapler's his handpicked guy, 
maybe the Giants would be going in a different direction from an organizational standpoint. Maybe they would look at both Farhan and Kapler and say, we need to go in a different direction. But right now it feels like it's just Farhan making this decision and Farhan will have the opportunity to pick the second manager of his tenure in San Francisco. And so I anticipate with Gabe Kapler being fired that the entire coaching staff will be out, that the Giants will do kind of a full-scale remodeling of their organization, as Zaidi hinted at during his excellent interview with Tolbert and Copes on KMBR on Thursday. I thought that Tom Tolbert, Adam Copeland did an outstanding job in pressing Farhan. And for the first time, I really thought that we heard someone in a very important leadership position with the Giants beyond just Gabe Kapler. I'm talking about Farhan Zaidi or Greg Johnson really acknowledged that this season did not live up to internal standards. It was a letdown. It was a disappointment. And furthermore, there needs to be a total recalibration, re-examination of the Giants' philosophies moving forward. He said that the team would move away from signing players to one- and two-year deals and would look at bigger-picture deals, longer-term deals. He would look at trades. They would be doing things in different fashion, which I think a lot of Giants fans wanted to hear, needed to hear, especially with how dull and unentertaining the team had become over the last two seasons. But nevertheless, I think that this is a major moment in the trajectory of the franchise because you have to go back to before Roger Craig was manager of the San Francisco Giants and the last time the Giants fired a manager. You go from Roger Craig to Dusty Baker to Felipe Alou to Bruce Bochy. Bochy retires on his own volition and then Gabe Kapler takes over and he is the first manager fired in San Francisco since the middle of the 1980s. So there's no doubt that this is a major moment. And the question now is, what does the team, what does the organization do moving forward? Because I've had experience of this across sports, whether I've been covering football, baseball, basketball. When teams fire a executive or a manager, they often go after someone who's the polar opposite of that person who previously held the position. So Gabe Kapler kind of uh, you know, a next-gen manager was oftentimes really interested in incorporating platoons, really interested in bullpenning his way through games, uh, thought that you could really leverage a 26-man roster from a pinch-hitting standpoint to put the best matchup on the field from time to time, regardless of whether you were sacrificing a player's confidence, regardless of whether you were sacrificing a player's long-term record. Uh, enter Mark Mathias, pinch-hitting for Brandon Crawford. Enter a wide variety of decisions that the Giants had made over the course of this season. So it'll be fascinating to see where the Giants go from here because remember, Farhan Zaidi has just one year left on his contract in San Francisco and I don't anticipate, based on his record, that Greg Johnson is going to suddenly extend Farhan and say, okay, you're here through 2025, you're here through 2026 and the manager that you hire, he can have the same tenure as you. So do the Giants pursue someone in a manager job who might want a two or a three year deal that would extend beyond Farhan Zaidi's current contract, or do they look at just kind of a one-year stopgap, someone in the mold of a Bob Melvin, who Tim Kawakami has raised in recent days on his great story for The Athletic as a possible solution for the Giants' manager managerial vacancy if the Padres move on from Melvin? Do they look at bringing Ron Wotus back, someone who is kind of the polar opposite of Gabe Kapler, someone who's an old-school uh, baseball type who really looks at the game through the same lens as Bruce Bochy did, and they do the type of thing where you've got maybe some friction, but maybe some much-needed friction between the front office and the manager and the coaching staff because it felt like the Giants were going for, with Gabe Kapler and Farhan Zaidi, uh, something that was so in sync that it was almost impossible to find what perfection would look like. And we know, based on 2021, what perfection looks like. It's a 107-win season. Uh, it's where every platoon, every bullpen game works according to plan. But we also know that maybe that's not good for the long-term health of the organization. We also know maybe that's not good for long-term fan interest. And so fans want to see guys who they, they can buy jerseys of. Fans want to see stars. I've covered this on previous episodes of the Kerry Crowley Show, and I will continue to cover this throughout the offseason. I plan on doing a case of managerial profiles, who the Giants could and should look at from here on out. But if I'm just thinking about this job, right now. I'm thinking about someone who's very different from Gabe Kapler, maybe someone who's got the older school baseball uh, you know, conviction in their gut that Bruce Bochy had, as opposed to conviction in analytics and matchups that maybe Gabe Kapler brought to the table. And that's not to say that they won't have someone who believes in the analytics that the Giants incorporate. Because you look around, all 30 teams in Major League Baseball are using analytics. You would be do doing a disservice to yourself to not look at the data, not look at raw numbers, not 
have them inform your decisions. But I also think that you need someone who instills confidence in players, who believes in veterans, who's helpful to the young kids coming up to the major league level in helping them assimilate to this new level of baseball where they will fail more than they've ever failed before. And I think that is the most pivotal part to remember with this 2024 Giants season. Regardless of who they bring in from the outside to manage this team, to run this organization from the dugout, you're going to have to have someone who can tutor the kids, who can help build confidence in a Kyle Harrison, because he is, aside from Logan Webb, the most important pitcher in the Giants organization moving forward into the future. You have to have someone who's going to stick with a Marco Luciano when Luciano inevitably struggles next year. Look, he could get off to a great start in April. He could be billed as the shortstop of the future. He might even be right now the shortstop of the future, but there's going to come a time when the league adjusts to Marco Luciano, he gets down on himself, and you have to have a manager who's in there, in his ear, making sure that he has the utmost confidence moving forward. And what that looks like, I think on the field it means, hey, if you've got a tough righty-righty matchup in the eighth inning and you've got a left-handed hitter on the bench who might be able to go play you some shortstop in the ninth, maybe it looks like sticking with Luciano in a situation where Gabe Kapler would have gone to a different player off the bench. Maybe it looks like having a pregame conversation in the clubhouse with the kids around showing them what a winning culture looks like. Because from the sounds of it, from the recent reports that I've read from the great journalists who cover the San Francisco Giants on a daily basis, whether it be Susan Slusser, Alex Pavlovich, Andy Baggerly, I don't want to forget anyone, Evan Wiebeck, Danny Emmerman, Maria Gordato, they've all done a really tremendous job covering the Giants' downfall throughout the month of September. But I think what has really been instilled in my mind over this last month or so has been Gabe Kapler essentially let the players run the clubhouse, and I think you needed a stronger voice in the clubhouse as things started to go south. And they really started to go south from a hitting standpoint at the end of June. Starting July 1st, the entire offense outside of Wilmer Flores essentially tanked, and they really started to go south from just a team-wide standpoint. The Giants stopped winning games, winning series that they needed to win at the beginning of August. You go back to the beginning of August, and the Giants lost a series against the Oakland A's. You go back to the beginning of August, the Giants lost a series against the Angels. It was inexcusable. It was incomprehensible the way that this team finished the season. And so the Giants have to bring someone in who's very different from Gabe Kapler. I'm not saying that because I don't believe that Gabe Kapler was the wrong person for the job. In fact, I think that Gabe Kapler is probably more of a scapegoat for organizational decisions than anything else. But I'm saying that because if the Giants are convicted that Gabe Kapler was an issue and that they could have gotten more out of this roster, and it certainly seems that way, by firing him, then they need to bring in someone who's different than him, who brings a wide variety of qualities that are maybe the antithesis of Kapler to the table. And again, I bring all of this up just to say that I don't know that Kapler was the real problem here. I think that there are things that Kapler could have done better in helping these young kids throughout the second half of the season, in maybe fostering a more a diligent, dedicated clubhouse, whatever you want to say. Again, that's more speculation on my part because as a former beat writer, I'm no longer there on a daily basis. But I do think that you look at the hand that he was dealt at the beginning of the season, the players who he had on his roster, and maybe it's not such a big surprise the Giants faltered during the second half of the season because who are the anchors of this team outside of a Logan Webb? Uh, you've got a rookie catcher in Patrick Bailey who is just pushed beyond his limit, and you can't expect much from him in the month of September. You've got Brandon Crawford, who is in his age 36 season playing shortstop, who's been in and out of the lineup with injuries. You can't expect that much more from him. You've got the free agents that you brought in from the outside, and a Mitch Haniger and a Michael Conforto, and they didn't live up to the expectations. And so really, I think this is on the front office. This is on the ownership, as I've talked about in previous episodes of the Kerry Crowley Show, where saying that ownership hasn't committed enough to winning. They haven't supplemented this payroll enough and given the Giants room to grow with external additions from the outside, given the Giants reason to believe that they could be better with external additions from the outside. And so I think that the Giants are caught in this situation where uh, the balance of the organization is really in question because you wonder 
how much longer Farhan Zaidi will be in this president of baseball operations role making these decisions, how they will go about this managerial search process. Will they bring in someone who's young, someone who might be willing to take a job on a one-year trial basis? I look at a Stephen Vogt up in Seattle, who's a former Giants catcher. I think he's maybe a bullpen or catching coach up with the Mariners. He's a young name to watch in this market, but do they also look at the opposite and say, hey, let's just bring in someone for one year of stability? Is it a Bob Melvin? Is it a Ron Wotus? If Dusty Baker, for whatever reason, is let go in Houston, do they turn to Dusty Baker for one year just to get the organizational culture righted and hire the coaches who can help facilitate development at the major league level? Because the most important thing the Giants have moving forward is this young crop of emerging talent who we've been hearing about since Marco Luciano was signed as an international free agent in 2016. It's Luciano, it's Matos, it's Bailey, it's Harrison, it's Mason Black, it's Carson Wisenhunt. You go up and down this roster, up and around, all around the diamond, and the future of the Giants is so dependent on the success of these young kids. So you need someone who's building the right culture in San Francisco, building a winning culture, leaning on Logan Webb, someone like him as a leader, and you need someone who's going to just provide a different perspective than Gabe Kathler provided. So the Giants ultimately make this call on Friday, three games to go in the regular season. They decide they're moving on from Gabe Kapler. And look, I think that based on the way that this season went, that last season went, there was always going to be a scapegoat. And if the Giants were able to finish above 500, maybe the scapegoat would have been the hitting coaches. Maybe it just would have been a little bit of a staff reset. Maybe they would have looked at some things in player development and said, we could change this, we could change some scouts. But you look at the way this team finished the season. In August and September, there's no doubt things had to be better. And you hear the stories coming out of the clubhouse, the beat writers, the great columnists have written in recent weeks. It certainly seems like there was tension in the Giants clubhouse. And when that became clear, it became more clear to me that Gabe Kapler probably wouldn't be returning as the manager of the San Francisco Giants. Even though he may not be the problem, he may be a symptom of the problem of the Giants organizational culture right now. Because I don't think that Farhan Zaidi put together a roster that was built to contend in 2023. And I don't believe that at the top level of the organization, Greg Johnson gave the Giants the keys, gave Farhan Zaidi the keys to put together a roster that was going to be competitive enough. I don't know that they have the payroll flexibility to do that. They, of course, miss on Aaron Judge last offseason. We all know how the Carlos Correas saga ended, and they go, they spread the money around, and very clearly, it just did not work. So what you had was, for Gabe Kapler, a team of role players. And for the most part, this season, he got players to buy into those roles. He got players to accept their roles, to embrace their roles, and to perform in their roles. But at the end of the day, Tyro Estrada isn't a two-hitter on most playoff teams. J.D. Davis isn't a four-hitter on most playoff teams. Both of those players had solid seasons. They made incremental improvements for the Giants that showed the Giants coaching staff, that Gabe Kapler could maybe develop them. But the problem is the rest of the roster didn't develop in a way that you would say, okay, we're comfortable moving forward with the status quo. We're comfortable saying, giving this manager another year. At the end of the day, Giants fans were fed up. People inside the organization were fed up, even though I think you can point to the top of the organization and look at where the problems are right now. So I think that this is a huge move in terms of the short and long-term future of the San Francisco Giants. In the coming days on the Kerry Crowley Show, I will look at every available managerial candidate, talk pros and cons, look at where this organization is headed moving forward because they are at a crossroads right now. Farhan Zaidi still a year left on his contract, and it appears he will be the one making personnel decisions this offseason. So how do the Giants approach this managerial search? What does that tell us about the organization's future and what it will value in the future? We will all find that out in the coming days, and I'm excited to chronicle that here on the Kerry Crowley Show. So apologize for any audio or video issues. I'm not using my normal equipment. I'm actually on vacation right now, slated to return Sunday, slated to return to talk in baseball with Marty Lurie and Bill Lasky and extra innings with Bill Lasky to break down this big decision. But I did want to hop on here, just do a quick emergency podcast, emergency video for those of you who watch on YouTube, break down the situation basically talk about what's going on in the world of Giants baseball right now. Gabe Kapler's out. What's to come? The Giants will probably look for the antithesis of Gabe Kapler and how they look at that search, how they view this search will tell us a lot about what this organization values and how it plans to win back fans moving forward because the bottom line is that a lot of Giants fans would not have been on board with Gabe Kapler returning. And I think 
that that ultimately helps sway the organization in its decision. Giants fans want to feel connected to this team. They want to feel that the right leadership is in place. And so today the organization takes a step toward making amends with fans. Of course, not speaking for every fan, because I know that a lot of people really did love Gabe Kapler. I was of the belief that he was not the problem. He was a symptom of bigger issues in San Francisco with the culture, with the organization. However, this is the decision the organization made, as we will continue discussing it in the days, weeks, and potentially months to come. Because again, organization is a crossroads. The bottom line is Giants fans wanted, needed, and demanded change.